LSUodyssey.com in the house. How about you? What's up, everybody? Happy Halloween. This is preview number three, I guess you could call it. LSU Alabama week. We're just extremely psyched. You know, we could definitely be in attendance to this game if we can somehow find a way down there. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. And so it's kind of like, oh, wow, you know, it's kind of sad. It's kind of like, wow, what's going on here? And um, trying to figure out a way could be possible to make it happen. Probably won't happen that we that we end up in Baton Rouge on the 5th of November. But I'm, you know, a very optimistic guy. I believe in miracles. I believe things like this can happen. Um We'll see. But if I'm not, I'm still going to be enjoying my birthday this weekend with LSU taking on Alabama at home with everything on the line. You know, the, obviously it could be a very disappointing game to everybody if, you know, Alabama come out, blow up, just obliterate LSU. Obviously that's probably the one outcome that would really sap the energy out of the fan base a little bit, you know. As much as there's been a big upswing and a big love for Brian Kelly and appreciation for all the hard work and the really crazy uh, job that he's done coaching him and his coaching staff, the way that they've been able to, to, you know, cobble this team together from all these different range of different range of areas, from the transfer portal, recruiting trail. You know, trusting freshmen on the offensive line, you know, doing some really radical stuff. And, you know, 16 different transfers through the portal to rebuild this roster. All because of, you know, the state that the program was in. And so anyone looking at it realistically, looking at this game realistically, you have to, if you're an LSU fan, you have to feel like you are playing with house money going into this game against Nick Saban's Alabama. Why? Not only are you catching Alabama potentially at the best time, where, you know, maybe that bye week helped, you know, some of those guys heal some wounds, sure, but maybe it allowed some of the, the locker room discord and dysfunction to continue to fester. You never know with Saban's Alabama. You really just never know. And frankly, usually it turns out that Saban can quell all of that, you know, noise, all of that bullshit and get a great A performance out of his team and, uh, you know, absolutely punish teams when they least suspect it. And as, you know, as a Tigers fan, with the last two years being so messy as an you know as an LSU fan watching what has happened the last few years against Alabama it has been nothing short of chaotic gross heinous i mean i've got about a billion you know ways i could describe the way those games made you feel bone chillingly uh, destitute Going into this game, there's a whole different vibe. Whole different vibe. You're one under Brian Kelly, and you're not starting over. You're merely reloading, and the 6-2 and two record proves that. Kelly has won games on the road. You know, at Jordan-Hare, at the Swamp, the first LSU head coach to ever accomplish that in the same season. Are you kidding me? And then, you know, all the comebacks led by Jaden Daniels. All these pieces are coming together. The passing game is finally looking a little bit better. The rushing game, as, as, as little depth as we have at the running back position, those guys are kicking ass, especially Josh Williams. And then you got Armani Goodwin, who's had a really good season coming back, looking good as well against Ole Miss. You know, in limited action, eight carries, 55 yards, though. 
always affected Armani Goodwin, it seems. Um, you know, there's so many ways that you can look at this game, but if you're an LSU fan, I believe that you have to look at this game like LSU are playing with house money. LSU are playing with house money for this game, in my opinion. And you know why I feel that way? Because of all the reasons I just stated. LSU were not pegged by anyone to be here. And in fact, I would think even Brian Kelly would tell you at least we're ahead of schedule. Not that he doesn't expect to win, but he thinks... I, from interviews, press conferences that I've seen in the flesh, on on TV, on on any way, you, shape, or form, you've seen Brian Kelly talk on on you know, coming on those uh, Thursday TJ Rib shows. He's always been very you know humble and more you know downplaying LSU's chances this year. Always stating how it's going to be a process. And really, if you look at it, LSU are ahead of schedule in that process, in, in my opinion. Especially when you look at what people you know, were predicting before the season and that type of thing. 7-5, seven 7-5 and five, seven and five ad nauseum, you know, six-win season less. You know, people were really out for blood. But now, LSU don't just want to be, oh, it's great to be at the dance. Great to be a contender, you know, when it's uh, four, you know 15 minutes on the clock in the first quarter. No. You know, shaking hands with Nick Saban and thank you, Nick. Thank you for kicking our ass. You are our leader, Nick. You know, like, no. No. Brian Kelly came to LSU. To beat Nick Saban. Not to not to kiss his feet and, and wash his feet after a 44 to 6 defeat. Defeat, defeat, defeat. Defeat, defeat. Get what I did there? Ridiculous. Anyway, um He's here to beat Nick Saban. And to, like you said, upstage Alabama. He, he said it today in a way of, you know, we're still a long way from upstaging Alabama. It's very interesting that he said that. Upstaging Alabama. Okay. So he's he's wanting to get rid of that dynasty in college football. Make LSU the new dynasty where it should be. Because anyone who knows college football knows damn well that Nick Saban didn't really want to leave LSU. The NFL was calling. And now that he looks back on it, he still has mad love for, for Louisiana and what he accomplished at LSU. And you know, considering his recruiting habits, he knows what that state has, what that state can provide when it's all aligned, going in the same direction. And if he didn't do it at Alabama, he would have done it at LSU. And yes, I'm talking about seven, eight championship rings. I'm talking about nonstop title contention. And when you look at LSU winning the championships we have in the 21st century, three going to four games, it's really not that hard to believe. When you look at the amount of draft picks, the amount of top talent that have come out of this state. Not that hard to believe. So when you've got Brian Kelly facing down against the guy he says he wants to beat, and now he's kind of inheriting a situation not wholly unlike the same one that uh, that, that Nick inherited in, in 2000, 1999, um, you know, it's uh, it's very the the parallels are interesting, and I think if you're Nick Saban, you've got to look at the job Brian Kelly's done and have a lot of admiration for it. And so, going into this game, would you really think that Nick Saban is going to be like kicking up his feet 
ready for an easy beatdown like maybe he was the last few years with Coach O. You know, <laughs> Nick Saban's got his guys reporting to him. Yeah, Coach O's in the parking lot with with two blondes. Uh, I don't. I think we'll be probably winning fifty five to six tomorrow, Coach. Okay, I guess I can go home early tonight, guys, for the first time this season. Thank you. You know, like, it was almost a joke. It was like the game that Saban would, would freak out at in the fourth quarter just, just for a show, just to show, like, how into it he is. That's what Kelly's trying to stop. That's what Kelly wants to, to, to get rid of. LSU is going to compete at the highest level. Not going to be a step over. Not going to be anyone's carpet. Alabama aren't getting any more easy wins on us, especially not in Tiger Stadium. This is also the first time Brian Kelly is going to be experiencing Tiger Stadium and that atmosphere, that night atmosphere. That's going to bring out a whole new coach from Brian Kelly. You know, the pressure is going to get going to be on. This game's going to be tight. This game's going to have seesaw moments. I really do believe LSU Alabama we're going to see potentially a really 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 good game here. It has all the makings set up for it to be a really fantastic four quarters of football. And in those moments when the lights are shining brightest, when Kelly's got to make a decision, when he's got to literally his decisions have got to out coach Nick Saban or you're going to lose the game. What's Brian Kelly going to pull out? Or will this game be completely left up to these players on the field to execute and dominate and no coach's decision is really going to have an outcome. I think the coach's decisions are definitely going to have outcomes or sorry impacts in this game in the outcome of this game. How could it not? I think I think you're going to see a chess match between Saban and Kelly. I think uh, those two coaches can't really resist that type of uh, of a scenario. I think they've been waiting. You know, I know Brian Kelly's been licking his chops, waiting for a chance to go head to head with Saban with a competitive roster. But if Kelly's going to do that, and Kelly's going to really not have the pressure on him hot early, what does he have to do more than anything? It's not about his po- it's not about his pregame speech. It's not about the power of his uh, even his adjustments early in the game. For me, the number one thing he has to do is calm Brian Polian down and make sure LSU special teams has a plan. Make sure LSU special teams aren't going to be handing. Alabama points. We might not be getting good field position special teams wise, whatever. I'll sacrifice that field position on those plays as long as we're not giving up 17 points to Alabama early, 20 points to Alabama early. Because if you do that, that pressure, that hot seat, it's going to build. And, you know, that's why Brian Kelly's playing with house money in this game. Because for me, really, the pressure in this game is on Alabama. But at the same time, you give Alabama 17 points early, 20 points early due to special teams errors, you've got it. You, the pressure then flips onto Kelly. If you keep this a close game throughout... The pressure's on Saban and Alabama the whole time. If you can keep this within a score. That's the thing is, you know, Saban and Alabama, they, they're coming in with a lot of issues across the board. Pretty porous defense when it comes down to it when they're playing against a dual-threat quarterback, against, you know, an elite receiving core. As good as a season as as a uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry has had uh, Kool-Aid McK- McKinstry has still given up some big plays at the back end Will Anderson is an absolute beast and I'm not going to even start saying he's had a bad season or, or, or an underwhelming season 
No. Um, he's been an absolute freak. And the reason his numbers are down is because they're using him in a lot of different ways to help the team and to shore up some of those deficiencies. You know, Henry Toto, linebacker, transfer linebacker from Tennessee that they got a few years back, he's someone I know we can exploit in coverage and with Jaden Daniels' legs in the running game. He is athletic. He is tall. He is stringy. He is twitchy. Henry Toto is a fantastic linebacker. But he has some deficiencies to his game that are tailor-made for this LSU offense to pick apart. And really, that's where you got to have a healthy Jack Besh. I, I know that's a name that people haven't heard for a few for a few weeks because of his injury. But I'm telling you, last season for LSU, when LSU nearly beat Alabama, if you go back and you watch that tape, Jack Besh is absolutely burning and twisting and turning Alabama's the middle of the field, really. All those linebackers, the safeties, Whenever he was matched up against any of those guys, he was torching them. They could not hang with him. Especially when double covering uh, Kayshawn Booty or trying to take Malik Neighbors out of the game. And they took DeRay Jenkins out of the game every time. That's the thing. is like We really have to realize that Jack Besh is a high-impact player and a big mismatch problem, headache for Nick Saban. If Nick Saban goes out there and sees that Jack Besh is either not 100%, not ready, or isn't out there, he's going to be happy, and he's going to be telling Pete Golding, this is, a, this is, this is great news, because Jack Besh should be utilized, you've got to get him targets, you've got to get him in rhythm, because once you get Jack Besh in rhythm underneath a guy they're not necessarily thinking they're going to have to shut down early. Due to, due to his status and all the uncertainty with with his seat with his season because of not being used that much and his injuries, um, he could absolutely be a perfect secret weapon. I quotation secret because he's not really that secret of a weapon, but um, you know, Kayshawn Booty's the guy they're looking to shut down. Malik Neighbors is the guy they're looking to shut down. But once you get Jack Besh going. Then it frees up that space that gets those guys going. And then you've got them by the you know what, because then you got Jaden Daniels having a ton of room to ru- to just tuck it in and run that football when he sees daylight. And that's the thing. Jaden Daniels' legs are going to make a big difference in this game. They have to for LSU to win this game. LSU are going to have to score at least 32 points in this game to win it, I believe. You're going to need Jaden Daniels to at least get one rushing touchdown or hit at least three, four explosive 30-yard, you know, 20-yard, 15-yard plays out of Daniels that really gas, really you know, gash that Bama defense. You know, I, I, I see a lot of potential here for LSU going into this game. I see a lot of intriguing storylines, top to bottom. I see two coaches who are ready to have a showdown. I see two coaching staffs who understand the stakes and are probably going to show you things that they haven't sh- they haven't shown all season different looks from Matt House that you didn't anticipate that you would see. Maybe different personnel. Maybe this is a game for someone like Quincy Wiggins. Come out on third down and and make some high impact plays on Bryce Young. Maybe this is a game where Harold Perkins can completely take everything over. Maybe this is a game where Brian Kelly can announce himself even louder 
through the megaphone as a perennial SEC contending coach with LSU by winning, by taking down, by beating Alabama. But at the same time, you know, I really don't even think Kelly has to beat Alabama for for, for the, the statement to have been made that LSU is back. If LSU give us a four quarter all world competitive show of pure tiger greatness you know which they did to the utmost of their abilities in 2021 at least defensively then we'll have a chance and that's the thing that really gets gets me going is that this defense the veterans of this defense have done it before yes there's no Damone Clark he's gone no Neil Farrell Jr. But here's the thing. You've made up for their lack, you know, the lack of Clark, the lack of uh, Farrell Jr. going into this game, the lack of Cordell Flop by having, or sorry, Cordell Flop wasn't even in that game, I don't think. Yeah, I think he missed that game as well. So you make up for their lack of those two with Perkins, Baskerville also, you know, playing out of his mind stepping up even more, just like he did last year as well. And then you got Makai Wingo, who has absolutely been a freak. A freak of nature up front for LSU. That's where I'm like, okay, I'm really liking LSU's chances in this game defensively because of that experience and the leadership we have going into this game for those young guys. Um... The, the worries of, of course, going to be the outside. But here's the thing that we have seen from Robert Steeples and Kerry Cooks throughout the season. We have seen those two make brilliant adjustments and elevate their personnel. Make sure that uh, you know the same mistakes do not do not continue. LSU will probably get beaten over the top a bunch in this game, beaten over the middle a bunch in this game. It's how well they tighten up in that red zone that's going to decide it for me with the passing game. But we're going to get into so much more of this, so much more of this. Everybody, have a happy Halloween. Check out the article on lsuodyssey.com. We're going to have continuous content. We've got a great interview with an awesome recruit coming out as well. Thank you so much. Have a happy Halloween. and Take it easy.